This is the finished result of the thing you are making in this tutorial. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to make a typewriter effect for your UI objects. To get started, what we're really going to need is just a UI object. It doesn't matter. You can just have a text label for this to work. That's what I'm basically doing. And I'm actually just going to put the script in the text UI object. It's just a text label, and that's, that's it. If you do need help on making the UI, you can just look at what I have and basically just copy it. So I have a mainframe, I have the text, and then I just have a name thing. And of course, I have a local script in there. And if everything does rescale for screens, for all screens. So if I were to do this or something, it's going to rescale. If I were to like bring the asset manager or something and I were to drag it over here, or even the workspace or something, it's going to rescale for all screens. And if you don't know how to do that, you can just get my plugin, which is offset to scale, which will change all of the descendants and or children and descendants, I guess, to offset. I mean scale, which will rescale for all screens. So I'll leave a link in the description where you can get that plugin. And without further ado, let's just get right into the video. So the first thing we're going to need is the typewriter function. So local function uh, typewriter, and we're just going to put in string s. Okay, we're just going to call this function down here. So type uh, writer. We're going to give it a just a random string. Hello. Actually, we'll just we'll do this. Hello, and we'll say my name is Noob. Do you like it? And then we'll say something like, if you don't, I will hate you for all of time. It's <laughs> just something ridiculous like that. So we'll put the apostrophe in there. Whoops, apostrophe. Okay. So this is going to be the string that's going to be showing right on this text box here, or the text label. So you can put whatever you want in here. Probably you're going to want to have some way to change it uh, for each individual NPC. But in this case, we're just having a random string that I just created right now. And you'll notice that I put in deliberate commas because we are going to be using that in our thing. It's going to pause for a slight period of time when you get to a comma and any sort of point where you might want it to pause. Okay. So the first thing we're going to need is we're going to need a new string variable. It's just going to be an empty variable for right now. And then we're going to need a for loop. So for i equals we're going to go from 0 to s length, and we're going to give it 1. Now, what does this do? So basically, we're starting at 0, and all this does, this is the same as saying string dot length, len, or len stands for length. So it's just going to return the number of characters in this string. So this is the same as saying that. So if you know how to use that, this is the exact same thing. It's equivalent. So let me actually just do a comment. So we're going to do string dot len of s is equivalent is equal to s length. There we go. So that's the exact, these are the exact same thing. And all they do is return the number of characters in this string. So the reason why we want to do that is because we want to go from the first character all the way to this character here. And so it's going to do that. Uh, before we go any further, I like to put a weight down here. And so yeah, now what we're going to do is we're going to set this new string value. So we're going to say new string is equal to and this is where it gets a little bit complicated. So we're going to call string. Actually, we can just say s sub. And then we can give it 0 or 1 and i. OK, again, this is exactly the same. So string dot sub uh, is equivalent to So it just is a faster, basically it's just a shorter way of writing the exact same thing. But basically what what it's doing, and let me just 
use the more descriptive way. So if we say string dot sub, whoops, one and I, pretty much what we're doing is we're saying this is a string we want to use then we're this is our starting character so it's going to be the first character and then we're going to this is our end period so if i is at like i don't know let's see one two three four five or something then it would be at this character here so we would have all these characters here so it's going to return a string that's equal to the first character to the fifth character now if i was at like 10 or something or maybe 50 or something, maybe it would be here or something. So then we get all of this. But pretty much, it's just going to return from any all the characters between the first character and wherever i is equal to. So remember, i is going to go from the first character all the way to the end, which means that if i is halfway through, we're going to get half the characters. So this means that if i is equal to 2, it's going to equal two characters. But if it's equal to 3, then it's going to be three characters. And that's what's going to give us the typewriter effect. So I'm going to use it the shortened way because I like optimizing my code in not only making it faster, but I like the aesthetics of my code being clean. So again, we're going to go from the first character to the wherever I is. Okay, now to get, now we have a working typewriter effect. So we're just going to say script.parent.text is equal to new string. And there we go. So now we should be seeing a typewriter effect, a very basic version of it. Hello, my name is Noob. Do you like it? If you don't, I will hate you for all of time. But you notice it kind of doesn't look like it's actually speaking. It kind of just looks like it's just going along and, you know, and it's okay, but I want to improve it a bit. So above here, we're going to put if then, whoops, else if, whoops, I'm not used to C sharp now else if okay okay so pretty much the first thing we're going to check is if s sub i subtract one i subtract one is equal to a comma actually we might need one more else if okay Oh, and I forgot to do thens. Okay. So, yeah, pretty much this is that. So, basically what it's saying is it's saying, okay, we're going, we're using this string. It's exactly the same as this and this and all that, except we're saying the first character is I subtract one and the second character and the length of the second, we're going from one character to another character. So, it's going to give us basically the exact character that we're on. Now, the way this works, I is if we just put I in here, for some reason it's not exactly going to be equal to I. It's going to be one character behind. So just be aware of that. You have to subtract one. I tested it out. It didn't work if I just put I in. So you have to put I subtract one on both of these, and then that'll give you the exact character you're on. Pretty much just saying we're starting at whatever I is on. So if I is equal to 3, it would be here, and we're going to 3. So it's just going to be equal to that character okay so we do the exact same thing we just give it different so we say sub and then we can actually just copy this exact thing so we get rid of that and then of course all we have to say is if that exact character is equal to let's say a period this time and we'll do this whoops is equal to old we'll give it an exclamation mark and then we'll give it a question mark and if we are on a if we get a comma we're just going to wait a whole second if we're on a period we're going to wait a little bit longer and if we're on exclamation mark we're going to wait a little bit longer. The same with one or with a question mark. So now if we hit play, now you'll see how this works. 
we might want to lower the wait time. Yeah, I kind of think we are waiting too long. Let's just do 0 0.5, and then for this, we'll do 0 0.8. It's pausing a little bit too frequently, and even we might even do 0 0.7, because that is just a little bit too slow, and even for commas, we might do that. And I might just do that. So if we hit play now, I feel like those commas are still a little bit long, and I feel like we should wait a little bit before. So maybe like 0 0.01 or something, or 0, 0, 001. It paused in here, I think. Did it not? Uh, maybe it's just me. No, I don't think so. So there you go, typewriter effect. So if you did enjoy this, this will work with any string, but pretty much that's that, and hopefully you did enjoy this video, and I'll see you in the next one.